This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, we'll talk with workers at the polls and local voters on this election day. Welcome to FYI News 13 on SSPTV. I'm Ken Kara, and we start with our election coverage. The ads have been run. The campaigning is just about over. Now the decision is in the hands of the voters. But will voters take the time to cast their ballots in today's general election? Lisa Sugar reports. Oh, there's no line today. We don't have to stand in line. Where is everyone? Well, that was one question asked by some voters today at polling places throughout the area. FYI stopped by the Cunningham Municipal Building in Cunningham to see if the polls were busy. Jackie Wetzel is the machine inspector for the borough. It hasn't been heavy, but it has been steady. Cunningham is a very good voting district. The young come out and the older voters come out also. So it, it's just been a, a steady flow. And today we can't complain about the weather. Oh, no. To, you could only be so lucky to have to stand out and hand out cards on a day like today. But as you can see, there's no one here doing that. Joseph Pellucci was one voter who takes his civic duty very seriously. It's important for everyone to come out and exercise their right to vote. I, I don't think I've ever missed an election since I was 21 years old. The process went very quickly for those who actually did turn out to vote. Across the valley in Butler Township, the story was pretty much the same. While there was activity, it was not overwhelming. And there were not a lot of races on the ballot itself. I think it's the shortest ballot that we have ever seen. Do you think that's the deterrent? They think there's no reason to come out? Yes. Um, before election, I, I have heard a lot of people saying, why vote? There's, there's no one to vote for. They're not pleased with the choices they have. And so, but you know, if you don't run and you don't participate, you can't complain, can you? Well, it's disappointing because everyone should come out to vote. It's one of the things that many of our soldiers have given their lives for, and we don't take advantage of it. People don't take it seriously. No, they don't, especially in an off-season election like this with only a few candidates running. And the candidates who are running in today's election in the 11th Congressional District, incumbent Congressman Republican Lou Barletta is facing a challenge from political newcomer Andy Ostrowski. In the 17th Congressional District, Schuylkill County Coroner and Radiation Oncologist Dr. David Moylan is challenging freshman Democratic Congressman Attorney Matt Cartwright. And in the 122nd Legislative District, incumbent State Representative Doyle Hefley is facing a challenge from businesswoman Patty Borger, who is making her political debut. Running unopposed today, State Representative Tara Tuhill from the 116th Legislative District and State Senator John Udichak from the 17th District. If you have not yet exercised your right to vote, you have until 8 p.m. this evening. Reporting for FYI, I'm Lisa Sugart. Thank you, Lisa. SSPTV will continue to have you covered on this election day. Join the area's most experienced team tonight from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. Sam LaSant Sr. along with political analyst, political analyst Dr. David Sosar, Michael DeCosmo, and Rick Morelli. And there will also be some other special guests on air as well. The area's most comprehensive election coverage will start tonight at 8 p.m. on SSPTV. And once we go off the air, you can go get some rest. And then when you get up in the morning, get your coffee and make sure you pick up the standard speaker. They'll have a complete election recap. And if you would rather get your election coverage digitally, you can go online at standardspeaker.com. In other news, a woman died while burning leaves today in Hazel Township. The Hazel Township Fire Company responded to Shepton this afternoon. Sources say that a woman died while burning leaves. Her name has not yet been released. Someone who is going to vote at a polling place nearby told officials that they saw smoke. No word on the exact cause of how the woman died. Family members have been notified. Meanwhile, as firefighters were returning back to the station, they came across another accident. This was the scene on Route 924 in Schuylkill County as a car went head on into a tree. One elderly female was inside the vehicle. She was flown from Shepton to or flown from the Shepton Cemetery to a hospital. No word on her name or condition. The car had heavy front end damage. Travel was slow going in the area of the accident. There is no word on the cause of this accident yet. Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi wants to clear up any questions concerning a proposed cell phone payment program for metered parking in the city. 
The misconception that's out there is that I am changing the meters and I am not changing the meters. The original meters that are out there are going to stay there. They will have a sticker on them giving you the option to pay by phone. You can put all the quarters you want in there, but if you don't want to do that, you can use your phone and pay. That's the only difference there is. City Council recently tabled the resolution that would give the go-ahead for the Pango mobile parking cell phone payment system to be implemented in the city. Council says it wanted to learn more about the plan. The mayor says the program has some definite advantages. Uh, if you're in a meeting, uh, you're at uh, lunch and it's running late, you can punch in your phone and add time to your meter. You can park in Zone 1 on Broad and Church and you can move down to Broad in Wyoming and park again as long as it's Zone 1. And it has so many, so many advantages of, and uh, the people that we're bringing downtown, these young executives, they all use their phone for everything and I want them to be able to use their phone. But I also want our senior citizens to be able to use the quarters. If approved, Pango would collect a 5% commission. Mayor Joe Yanuzzi had hoped to begin the program this past weekend. Council must decide whether or not to allow the cell phone payment plan to become a reality in the city of Hazleton. Before we move on, I want to go back to a story we just reported on. The woman who died in that fire that was in Schuylkill County, not Hazel Township. Moving on tonight, if you know anyone from New Jersey or Delaware, you probably heard them bragging about what they pay at the pump. Well, don't worry, fellow Keystone State residents, our day may be coming. AAA believes gas prices could fall below $3 in the Wilkes-Barre area for the first time since December of 2010. As of November 1st, the average price in New Jersey and Delaware is around $2.80 a gallon. The national average is just below $3. A representative from AAA Mid-Atlantic says lower gas prices are a boon to the economy just in time for holiday travel and shopping. One church in our area is opening its doors to the public for a free turkey dinner. Holy Trinity Orthodox Church on South Kennedy Drive in McAdoo will serve a free Thanksgiving meal this Saturday, November 8th. The dinner will last from 12 noon to 2 p.m. This free Thanksgiving dinner is again this Saturday at noon at Holy Orthodox Church in Holy Trinity Orthodox Church in McAdoo. All are welcome to attend. Coming up later on FYI Surprise, it's Dave Day, the Standard Speaker Sports Editor, is here a day early to talk about Joe Madden signing with the Chicago Cubs and more. And when we come right back, we'll tell you how and why this high school junior is helping the Shriners Club in Hazleton. This is FYI News 13. Brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. We have information every Tuesday here on FYI through our Care for Kids segment. We're talking about adoption. We're talking about foster care. And Neil Alberto is back with us from Catholic Social Services. They've been around for 75 years helping families in the greater Hazelton area. So, Neil, thanks for joining us back here as we explore and educate our viewers about foster and adoption. Thank you again for this opportunity. In November is actually National Adoption Month. Okay. So numerous activities to promote that and at least, you know, push understanding on that whole issue of adoption. Right. This week, we're going to focus our attention on the statewide network, and that is to focus our attention on children who are not infants, but children out there who are a little bit older, um, not necessarily uh, the majority of people looking to adopt an older child, but they're out there and they do need loving homes. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've been part of the statewide adoption network since mm -hmm. its inception during the Casey administration, so actually going back to 1994, um, and the whole idea behind that, the Pennsylvania Statewide Adoption and Permanency Network, was to try to move kids who were stuck basically mm -hmm. in the foster yeah. care system and get them into more permanent homes. Um, what we're seeing now, though, are definitely the need for homes of four older children. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be, and maybe some special needs as well, uh, but it could be anywhere from 10 to 16, 17, and 18. And you may think, mm -hmm. you know, why that? You know, uh, age uh, when they're older, but we're looking at a permanent home for mm -hmm. a child, a place for that child once they maybe do graduate that they could come back to um, mm -hmm. and, and call home. 
Okay, so you look at uh, this process and you have people come in if they have any questions about this. Like, what is the process for our viewers out there who want information and think, you know, maybe I could provide a home for an older child? We would encourage a family to call, mm -hmm. come and sit uh, through an orientation process, and we go over all of the um, qualifications mm -hmm. that a family or an individual would need. This is a little bit different than our infant program mm -hmm. because um, a single person could actually adopt through okay. this uh, uh, program. And, uh, you know, again, we talk about the types of children that, that are available, um, the requirements for families, everything that they would need to go through. There are uh, specific hours of training that a family would need to go uh, through before they're actually approved as what we call a resource mm -hmm. family. And once all of that is completed and their study is approved, their profile, family profile, then we begin the process of trying to locate a child within the system. Mm -hmm. Or at the same time, those families could be potential foster parents because a lot of adoptions actually take place through foster care. If a child is placed in that home through foster care, uh, nine times out of 10, if um, the goal is moving towards adoption, they'll approach that foster, th that, that family and say, would you consider adopting this child? All right. Lots of information on foster and adoption. Next week, we're going to focus on, you know, maybe it's not mom and dad who want to adopt, but we see a lot of grandparents who are becoming the providers of their grandchildren. That's next week here on FYI Care for Kids. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. It was a gorgeous day to get out and vote this fall. Weather shot was taken from just outside the polling place in the Cunningham Borough. That's right on Main Street. Here's what election night has in store according to the National Weather Service. Increasing clouds will move into our area. The low will be 42 degrees. On the extended forecast Wednesday, good news everyone, mostly sunny. The high will be near 55 degrees. At night, there's a 50% chance of rain, mainly after 1 a.m. The low will be 41. Thursday, rain is likely. The high will be 56 degrees. Again, Thursday night we can expect some rain. The low will be 38. 30% 30 chance of rain and snow showers before 1 p.m. on Friday. The high will be 44 and then at night will drop down to 30 degrees. Saturday looks partly sunny with a high of 42 and at night the low will be 32 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Our next guest had her life changed for the better when she was very young thanks to the Shriners Hospital in Philadelphia. I talked with her about her struggles, her success and how she's giving back. I just met Marielle McDonald, who is a junior at Wyoming Seminary High School, and it's incredible because we just met, we talked for about three minutes, and I have about seven pages of notes. Your story is truly <laughs> incredible, and we're going to start at the end, well, where she's at right now, and, and work backwards a little bit, and you're doing a fundraiser coming up for the Shriners Hospital. There's a reason for that, but let's start with the success and why you're wearing a crown right now, and, and explain that first. Well, I'm the current Miss Laurel Woods Outstanding Teen, and I compete within the Miss America organization. And this organization is a scholarship pageant where it allows young women to grow as a person and mature and really improve in their communication skills and allows you to have a platform. So my platform is Pennies for Miracles, and I chose the Shriners Hospitals because they have impacted me from a little girl since I had hip dysplasia. All right, and let's start there. You, you had hip dysplasia, and talk about how you ended up going to the Shriners Hospital in Philadelphia. Well, it goes back to my late grandfather, Thomas Enoch Roberts, and he was an, a huge influence on me. He was actually a Shriner for the um, Shriners Hospitals, and we chose the Shriners Hospitals because they specialize in orthopedic care, spinal cord care, burn care, and cleft lip and palate, and I, and I needed that orthopedic care at the Philadelphia Hospital. So you go there, and you said you have a little, you, you have some memories. What do you remember from your time there, and you're still touched by it? What I do remember is I was with the doctors. I had braces on my hips. Every step I took, my hips used to pop out, but... I kept on trying. The doctors, they're like family. They kept cheering me on every step every step I took. And it's just really a family environment. And, and I'm very thankful for the doctors and for, and for all their support. Well, somewhere in this mess of notes that I made is your next step in this journey, which is incredible. The doctor said that you should maybe do more. And if you could explain just what happened next, because you got into dancing. Yes, I did. I started dancing at the age of two. I've been dancing now for 14 years. It's, it's kind of crazy to think I've won national and world awards excuse me, world awards at the age of eight. So now I'm a huge, I'm a dancer at Wyoming Seminary. I'm actually a captain of the dance team, which is huge, especially with my hip deformities. And I currently have been having struggles with my hips, but I'm just pushing through it. 
So you have a lot to be grateful for to the Shriners. And you did your first fundraiser years ago, and I thought that was an interesting story too. Yes, when I was in seventh grade, I had my first fundraiser. I remember seeing my grandfather having these stuffed animals in the back of his car. So I was like, hey, maybe I, I could do something to help out. So I was like, let's have a stuffed animal drive. Let's collect all new stuffed animals at Wilkesburg Academy. And also have a dress down day where 100% of the proceeds will go towards the Shriners hospitals. So then I collected the stuffed animals and actually went down to the hospital and I handed it to the children. And just seeing that smile on their face and just seeing that impact and instilling hope in them really impacted me and, and I wanted to do more. And now, fittingly, you're doing a dinner dance coming up at Capriotti's near McAdoo. And just talk about that event a little bit, why you plan that, and who, um, if people, if they still want to come out, how can they? I'm actually really excited that I, I am partnering with the Hazleton Shrine Club, and we chose to do this dance because of the Shriners Hospital and because it is near and dear to all of our hearts. And, and it'd be great if everyone comes out because it's just a fun event. It's for the Shriners Hospitals and, and remembering that every penny counts, and it's $35 um, to donate. So it's, it's just a great event. It's going to be tons of fun. All right. So that is the latest and an incredible story. Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing. An amazing story there from McDonald. I, I sometimes I even struggle just getting through these numbers. She already wrote a book and does all of that work. Now let's take a look at these numbers. It's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. The daily 155, the big four 1931, Quinto 09423, Treasure Hunt 3412, 13, 23. It's Dave Day early on the sportscast next. This is FYI News 13 Sports. The bartender. <laughs> bartender here, barkeep, anywhere? I got, I got the drinks right now. Okay, I got, what do I got, round, what do I got? What, Theo's, Theo said I got one round. No, actually I had thought about that, so one round's on me, please. That's a shot and a beer, that's the Hazleton way, shot and a beer. It's Dave Day once again on the SportsCast. And Dave, I think it's very interesting. Whenever I go out with my friends and we're at a bar, we usually get a beer and a shot. And I didn't know it might be in my blood being from Hazleton. As Joe Madden says, it's the Hazleton way, as he's introduced as the Cubs manager in a bar across the street from Wrigley Field. And he buys all of the reporters a shot and a beer. Joe, when you get back to Hazleton, we'll be right here. And you pick the bar, so it's all good. Joe Madden going to the Cubs, introduced this week, Dave, Good move for both team and Madden, you think? I think it's a great move for Joe. Joe has always uh, tended, had a tendency to manage in a, a National League style. Um, he's always looked at the National League uh, as a different, different than the American League, what he was used to. Uh, I've been reading that uh, American League, he's always had to figure out games ahead of time, knowing work as pitchers. Uh, now he has to work the pitcher as part of the batting lineup, and he has to know when to the situation, more of a situational game in the National League. So Joe's going to have to get used to that, but uh, he's not one of the best managers in baseball. He is one of the best managers in baseball for a reason, and he knows what he's going to do, and uh, I think it's a win-win situation for both teams. There was an interesting quote from Joe talking about coaching in the National League. He does seem excited about it. You move from, and no disrespect to the Rays, I think he did a great job there, so did the Rays organization, but he moves from Tropicana Field to Wrigley Field, and he'll have a little bit more money to work with here at Chicago as well, and they seem very aggressive, Dave. They're really going after this World Series title. Theo Epstein even said it. I read it in the Standard Speaker in the article you guys ran from the Associated Press saying, listen, we didn't want to get rid of the other manager and, and break contracts in this, but I have to win a World Series. Do you think they could do it in these five years? Um, that, that's going to be an interesting uh, story in baseball over the next five years. Um, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Joe, uh, on the organization. They do have the young players in place, which he had in Tampa, too. He had a lot of great young players to work with. But now he has some money at his disposal, too, meaning the organization could spend money to bring in players, uh, fill in pieces like the Yankees did in years past or the Angels, teams like that, where you might, your farm system might develop a lot of players, but you have that one or two missing pieces, and now the organization has the wherewithal to get that, um, get that missing piece. So we'll keep tabs on Joe Madden continuing the Hazleton way throughout the United States of America. Let's move to local football playoffs starting this Friday night. North Schuylkill, the number one seed in District 11. Did any real roadblocks on the way here? I'm not too familiar with Palmerton or Northwestern or Palisades, but North Schuylkill, I think that just judging from the season, should have a pretty good shot. Uh, the Spartans should have a very good shot, but uh, the Spartans are also very familiar with Northwestern Lehigh, the team that beat them last year in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Uh, they lost on the road in the, in the championship game last year, so the Spartans are familiar with Northwestern Lehigh. 
Uh, Colonial League tend, does tend to play uh, a strong schedule. They play one another very hard. Uh, the, the football in the Lehigh Valley is, is tough. Is it tough as Coleridge in football? I guess we're about to find out. So that'll be interesting. And one of the teams really hot right now, they finished the season in our anthracite grade just below North Schuylkill here on FYI News 13. The Marion Colts, they go against their rival Tamaqua. And Dave, once again, a balanced attack, good offense, good defense, running the ball, passing the ball, very consistent. They head in the number two seed in the single A playoffs. And the Colts, I think, have a pretty good shot. At yeah, the Colts, are they are hot, like you said. And uh, they're going into playing a team they've beaten already in Williams Valley. So the Colts should be confident going into their first round game. Again, you can't look ahead too much. It's, it's a playoffs. Every team right now is 0-0. Zero zero. It's a cliche, but that's the way it works. And so the Colts are going to have to, you know, again, like you said, show that balance that they've shown over the last half of the season, and uh, they should do fine. Happy Wing Night. It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement, St. Michael's Recreation Center, located on Fern Street in Freeland, will be hosting Elvis impersonator Nick Mystician on Sunday, November 16th. The event will also have a spaghetti dinner starting at noon. Cost for show and dinner, just 20 bucks, or $15 for just the show, which will be held from 1 to 4 p.m. For info, please call 570-788-5589 at tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. The Reverend Monsignor Alfred R. Ott of Allentown masses Thursday at 10.45 a.m. in the Cathedral of St. Catherine of Siena. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 9 p.m. and Thursday from 9 to 10.45 a.m. at the church. Arrangements are by the Robert C. Weir Funeral Home. Thomas Barna of McAdoo masses Thursday at 9.30 a.m. in the Immaculate Conception Parish at St. Anne's Church. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Charles W. Catherman of Cunningham, no local services were announced. Monica Spancake of Manchester, New Hampshire, services will be held Thursday at 10 a.m. in the St. John's Memorial Park in Ringtown. The Stauffer Bresnick Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Lucille Payne, formerly of Drums, the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. Patricia Patty Costell of Cunningham. Arrangements will be announced by the Harmon Funeral Home. And also tonight, in loving memory, goes out to Christopher Lee Polchek. Eight years, and still I cry. I wonder why you were taken away. Though we're apart, you're deep in my heart. Love forever from Mom. And also forever missed and never forgotten. Love from Ed, Tony, Malaya, and son, Elijah. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Candice Millot of West Hazleton. Candice, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. Election coverage at 8 p.m. tonight on SSP TV as well as online at standardspeaker.com. And we'll have more on the election tomorrow on FYI. Until then, take it easy, everyone.